Welcome to Better Relationships, Better Life, where relationships expert Judy K. Herman and her guests share insights that can help you move through conflicts in your 9-to-5 jobs and your 24-7 lives. Crack the clarity code and create deeper connections beyond the messiness of relationships. Here's your host, Judy K. Herman. A lot of what we discuss on this podcast is also relevant to workplace relationships and your professional life. You can change the culture of your corporation where people feel heard and respected. As a speaker and executive coach, I support organizations and leaders. Find me on LinkedIn, Judy K. Herman, or my website, judycounselor.com. Today, we're talking about healing relationship injuries through invitation. Sherry Timko, who is also a psychotherapist and coach, shares ways that she helps women with resistant husbands. Let's listen in. So share with us about you. Yeah, I have been working as a psychotherapist specializing in couples for the last 20 years. I have really poured my most of my education, most of my training, everything. I'm very, very passionate about mm-hmm. help, having couples, helping couples have a great relationship. And um, I recently, within the pandemic's time span, um, I had had this pivot where I realized that it wasn't enough just to sit in a room and help one couple at a time, Mm -hmm. that I really needed to expand the work that I was doing. Um, I realized what really sparked it all is that I realized that I had a roadmap that I go on with couples after they've had a deep relationship injury, and Mm -hmm. that it is just very effective at getting them through that crisis to having a really good relationship. So my coaching practice has been evolving a little bit. And what I realized is that I really want to work with the women whose spouse won't work on the relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And that this is such a, a, an important part of working with couples and having them have a good relationship that they shouldn't miss out on the opportunity to really improve their relationship just because their spouse doesn't have time or is not interested in talking with a therapist or a coach or taking a course with them. Like there's lots and lots of things that can be done to improve that relationship, even wow. without them participating. And so, so help me understand and others too, you, you decided to go into the coaching realm and helping women with resistant husbands uh, it, it, tell me what would be, um, your decision about that? You said it was because of COVID and, and other things, but yeah, flesh this out a little bit more so we can understand. Cause a lot of people, and we did it, we did actually an episode, I think it's episode three on the difference between, uh, coaching and counseling. So if you're listening to this, you can go back to that as I, uh, interviewed Ro- Dr. Robin Buckley, but let me hear from you, Sherry, about how you define the differences between the two. I see therapy and counseling as delving deep into mental health issues, uh, working through the past. There's there's pulling in stuff that happened from childhood. And I see coaching as much more focused on the here and now and moving forward. And I know a lot of couples get stuck, really focused on the past And they miss their opportunities of what's happening right now and how they can impact that relationship. I tend to be a pretty nuts and bolts person. Mm -hmm. So I am very much focused on where are you today and how are you going to move forward? What are the skills you need? What is the personal development that you need so that you bring something positive back to that relationship? And when you do that and you do that, in the safety of a, a program or a coaching that values that relationship, it makes a huge difference. And you can shift that relationship, even if your partner is not all that excited about the work. Wow. I, I really want to hold this. I want to go back to a term that you used and I wrote it down because I really haven't heard it this way before, but I have actually two questions for you, Sherry. Uh, one, I'd like you to flesh out 
when you said a, uh, a deep relationship injury. I'd like you to flesh that out a little bit. But then I'll also, I have a question too, maybe that I can kind of, and maybe I need to give you one at a time. I don't know. But to <laughs> me, they kind of integrate because can we, even as therapists, perhaps spend way too much time in that past, whatever that relationship injury was? Well, a relationship, a deep relationship injury is something like an affair, it's um, financial infidelity, it's not being there at a crucial or key point, mm. it's ongoing um, disconnect that leaves a person feeling really alone. So um, I always hope that couples will have small relationship injuries. And I know that every couple is going to have relationship injuries. It's just a part of being close to another person. You can't be vulnerable to them without risking that they are going to let you down. And in fact, they will let you down. You will let them down. You will say something too harsh. You will, um, you will miss an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, let me let me back up a little bit too, Sherry, because flesh this out for us, uh, a deep relationship injury versus maybe a less, uh, maybe more of a shallow uh, relationship in injury is, is uh, maybe flesh that out a little bit for us to understand that. Um, and I'm, and the training that I've gotten with Gottman is like, you know, the, 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 task here is to repair because you're saying we're all going to injure each other, right? It's like human. <laughs> it's we're unfortunate. Do we don't want to, and uh -huh. we go into the relationship believing we're not going to. Mm. I have never met a couple who hasn't had some level of relationship injuries. Mm. When they're wise, they repair them as they happen. So you mm -hmm. don't have that resentment build up and that frustration in the relationship. But it's, we can't say that that isn't a natural part of a relationship. Right. That's, that's amazing. So I guess the difference between the, the deep, is there such a thing as a shallow injury? Are the deep injuries like a one thing and the shallow ones are maybe more common? I'm tell, tell me yeah. about that. <laughs> well, I think it happens on a continuum. Mm. So, and mm. One couple can have the experience of an affair and it totally destroys everything. And another couple can have a very similar experience and they seem to walk through it easier. So it's not just the, the depth of the injury. It's also what that injury means to that person. Sounds like it's maybe the resilience of the couple. Yeah, Is that resilience. what we're talking about? Well, that is one of the factors. Um, I also think it has to do with the agreements that they've made mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what, how much those were violated. I think it also has to do with the values that they have and whether there's room for, uh, I don't want to say breaking the boundaries, but like um, bending boundaries um, and how they, how they interpret that. Is it, is it really a throwing out of a value or is it still within the value or is it kind of skirting around a value? And these are such personal assessments mm. and that mm. determines how well or how difficult it is for them to go through that repair work. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so, and that would be in the counseling realm of, of those are the issues that you're dealing with. Right. And then, so the coaching you deal with, not so much those, those ongoing or deep or however things that they, they haven't recovered from, but you're taking uh, the now, the now approach. Okay. What are we going to do? Let's be real practical um, so that's what I'm hearing and correct me if I'm, uh, not summarizing that as accurately as I need to. Yeah. I think that, um, when women try to work on the relationship on their own or their often their partner is in the background, it's that they won't work on it in this formalized way. Mm. Um, 
a lot of those women do have relationship injuries that they're carrying. And so some of the work about the present is uh, being able to move forward and heal those. So it's not that we ignore the stuff from the past, but we look at it as what, how is it affecting you right now? What do you need to bring closure to that? How do you, um, how do you bring something better back to the relationship so that that connection is restored? Gotcha. And, and you're saying that you can work with a woman and, and the relationship is, um, I mean, does she have some power in the relationship for it to change? And even if he doesn't come, I mean, tell me more about that. Yes. I know this is going to sound very familiar to you. A relationship is a dance. And if either partner changes their step, the other partner has to change with them. Um, maybe a script is a better analogy. Um, we, we write these scripts with our partners and, um, you probably could sit down with a pen and paper and write out the whole argument without any feedback from your partner, because we stick with these scripts and we Mm. just go through them again and again. Well, if you change your part, if you change what you say, when your partner says this, you say something different, then if they stick with that script, it, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. So they have a choice to make about shifting what they're going to say or sticking with what they said all the other times you've talked about this. So yeah, one individual can really shift a relationship. It's, it breaks a pattern. There's so many times, Sherry, when I, uh, I counsel women as well and, you know, help them to change that script and that dance in between and, uh, you know, how, how to do it to their particular situation. And then I'm thinking, well, is your husband going to look at you and say, where's my wife and, and who are you? <laughs> because it could do that. I mean, you, you could do that, right? If uh, it's kind of like a ping pong game, I, that's how the analogy that I use. Uh, and that's what John Gottman talks about that, uh, part of the two of the horsemen that is, is the accusation defensiveness. And I call it ac- accusation defensiveness dance. So if you just put your paddle down, (laughs) you're being accused and you don't, and you're not a a defensive uh, and and you do something, you have another plan in place. Right, right. Yeah. So one of the tenets of the work that I do with women is to change the relationship through invitation. Mm -hmm. I think of the relationship, like our role in the relationship is to companion our spouse Mm. and being a companion means offering invitations. Now we often try to change our partner's behavior through criticism. Mm. And, it's not <laughs> and that doesn't very work. Effective. <laughs> Who in the world has ever been really motivated to change their behavior because someone was criticizing you? I don't, I don't know. Do you know of anybody that's done that? <laughs> no, I, I certainly don't respond well to that. <laughs> So sometimes that takes like calming down that part of yourself that is ready to jump on that thing that's not going well, Mm -hmm. but reframing that into the invitations and knowing that an invitation can be turned down, Mm -hmm. like that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. maybe we need to find a different invitation, a different way of approaching it so that you can get that. Yes. You can get that, that positive experience and connection. That's interesting. John Gottman calls them bids, relationship bids. It's for, yes. Bids yes. for connection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well share with us. Um, and so you have like practical tools in your coaching program then with, and you work just with women or do you work with both? Uh, primarily I work with women. Uh, I have had the same experience as you in my therapy practice that it's generally women who are tracking the relationship. Um, but really the person that I work with is the person who is a barometer in the relationship. They are usually the one who recognizes that things are a little bit off track before the other person does. Now, in a couple where things are working really well together, either partner could say, hey, I don't really like the way this is going. 
I think we need to do some adjustments or, or shift something. And the other partner says, I trust you so much that of course, let's change this. Mm. But most couples don't work that way. Mm-hmm. Usually one partner is kind of tracking things and says, you know, I don't, I don't think this is okay. And their partner is like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. It's all fine. It looks fine to me. Why don't you think it's fine? <laughs> and, and then they get into a power struggle over whether it's okay or not versus dealing with the actual thing that's happening in the relationship. That is absolutely, it is so common. Rarely do couples come in and both are saying we equally <laughs> believe we need to be here. <laughs> so it yeah. is very, very common. And I, I just want folks to know that if there is resistance there, it's like the minimizer maximizer dance, so to speak, that that is normal. It, and it's good to have some conversations about that. Uh, even before the conflict comes up, like, okay, so when is the time we're going to come and see a therapist or a coach? So. Yeah, so the tools that I use focus on whichever that relation, that person is who's kind of tracking the relationship. And I, I just want to be clear, most of my clients, their spouse is not resistant to change. They're not resistant to um, things getting better. There's usually some other thing that's holding them back from engaging in this work. Sometimes it is that they are really busy and just don't have the time and the mental space to work on it. Sometimes they feel really discouraged and they've kind of decided this is as good as it gets. And they, they just are, are going to rest there until someone convinces them otherwise. Sometimes they're, they're focused on other things. Um, but for most of the women, that I, for the women that I work with, their partner loves them. It's not a question of love. It's a mm-hmm. question of getting into this power struggle where you're using your energy trying to convince your partner that something is wrong and they need to do something instead of actually focusing on the problem and uh, using some tools to actually try and fix it. Wow. What you just shared too makes so much sense. And you and I would agree, most of us agree that we're all as human beings, we are resistant, we grow. And then, then I think this is part of our human journey, but we'll recognize the resistance in our spouse and call it that when it might be something else. But I want to back up to something else that you said too, Sherry, is this the the energy within the relationship? And uh, I had a guest early on, Chloe Balatori, who's also a relationship coach. And it's interesting. And she talks about the yin yang energy, the feminine negative or feminine and masculine energy within the relationship and how to honor that, how to work with that, which I thought was really really interesting. So it's kind of like also what you're saying. Um, it, it, there, there needs to be some kind of, you know, change in that energy so that both are feeling safe. They both want to show up and, and love each other and be partners together. Yeah. I think we have all these, um, sayings that, imply that the only way to change things in your relationship is to have both partners work on it. You know, it takes two to tango or that you both have to be invested in it. And what I have found is that that's not necessarily true. You do have that, um, that dynamic where one is growing and the other is not, or what I love this when Uh, particularly women are more comfortable growing in therapy or in coaching or in relationship with other people. When you talk to men, they tend to grow from other experiences. They might be learning a skill or watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts or reading, sometimes reading a book, a some books, not the books, <laughs> not the books I'd hand my husband. He's not going to read those, <laughs> but he's reading other things in his personal growth. And so I think it's easy to miss and get into this dynamic of you have to come and do this type of growth with me mm. versus being able to recognize what those types of growth are. 
Mm, that's interesting. That's very interesting. So really honoring each other, honoring uh, how one grows, how one is, you know, motivated and energized. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So share a little bit about your personal story, if I may ask, uh, Sherry, uh, that got you to this point of really having a passion for couples. You have a husband, you've got kids. Uh, share your journey. You're a real person who's gone through this, um, you know, and, and, and has developed to this yeah. point. Yeah. Tell us more. Well, it's, it's interesting. This question is always hard for me to answer. As a therapist, you know, we kind of put that stuff aside when we walk <laughs> in the room. We do. <laughs> and I have, I have this professional journey that led me here. And it's, it's a, it's very distinct. It's like, I couldn't have gotten here without going on that journey. And it's easy for me to forget about the personal journey, which includes that, you know, I was married very young and then got divorced very young. Mm. And, um, it, I would not, my story, I would not say was because I had that experience, mm -hmm. but when you look back, it's, it's hard to think that maybe that didn't have an influence. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I went on to get married again. Um, my husband and I have been married for uh, over 20 years and we have a really amazing relationship. Um, and it, it's funny to me because when we met, it felt like we were falling in step together. Mm. That's how it's always felt for the two of us. Uh, that doesn't mean we're always in step, but we're always kind of walking down that path together and eventually re reconnect and it, at the right moments we reconnect. Um, but I have always given him the credit for us having a really good relationship. You know, that's he, interesting. Well, I've got to hold something because as you're speaking, there's some stuff coming up for me because it sounds to me like you've been able to separate your, your personal growth, your your uh, and your professional growth and your husband, you've never given your husband an opportunity to say to you, Sherry, uh, to accuse you of being a therapist in the relationship. <laughs> well, that's just not the way he is. Oh, he's very even keel. <laughs> yeah. And so he's just, uh, we had a discussion just last week and I thought he was implying, oh, you're pulling out that therapist hat. And I, I said something, <laughs> he was like, I didn't say that at all. I'm like, so I am always the one who has to like check my thoughts and my reactions because it's possible that I have just had 20 conversations in my head that he wasn't party to. And he just looks at me like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Could you just start <laughs> at the beginning and tell me where we are and we'll go on from there. So his personality balances mine a lot where I'm high energy. I have all these things I want to do. I dive into things really fast, really deep. And then he's, he's like, Hey, how you doing swimming over there? I'm like, I'm going to drown. <laughs> like, uh, you're not going to drown. Just come on over here. There's a, there's a dock over here and then we're wow. good. Wow. So he's exactly what I need. And that, that's such an amazing space to be in, in my relationship, because it does, it does mean that we don't have a lot of the challenges of, for instance, my first husband, we were like fire and ice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We would have spent our whole lives arguing with each other over wow. every single thing that could possibly be argued with yeah. about. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Of course, there are, there are couples that are high intensity and yeah. there are couples that, that argue and that actually, I mean, in, in my practice and what I've seen, but there's such like intense energy and then they, they have a great sex life and they have all this intensity because, but they, they've learned to do life together. So it's not, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, whatever personality you have, that's, that's beautiful that you're in this flow and that he sounds very supportive and that it's, it's great that, that you have that. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is one of my motivations for helping people have great relationships. 
I believe that the marriage relationship, long term or married, um, is is one of the most powerful relationships. Mm. When that functions well, you can create a sacred space mm. where you can show up and be who you really truly are. Wow. And from that provides a springboard to do so many other things in life because of that security that comes from that relationship. Wow. And I love it that you use that word sacred space. That's actually the well, one of my chapters. Actually, it's the first chapter of my book, Sacred Space, because these are like getting beyond the messiness. And, and Sherry, I would imagine even you and your husband as even keeled and as flowing as you are. I mean, there's times you have your conflicts, right? Absolutely. How do you 100%. deal with those? <laughs> so, so do you ever, do you ever, I, I'm going to ask you a nosy question and, and you can answer however you want. And maybe it's, uh, but there's been times where, you know, couples in the, in the office and you're working with them and, and they're doing really great. And you wish, oh man, I wish my marriage could happen. <laughs> I don't there, know if you've ever had that or not, yes, but I, I have. have. <laughs> there are times when I have been a little bit jealous of couples who've worked through all their stuff and yeah. are like actually functioning really well. Yeah. But what happens far more than that is I go home at the end of the day and I am so grateful for my husband mm. because when you compare your, your spouse to people who are in crisis, <laughs> my spouse <laughs> always comes out on top. Yeah, absolutely. I be, <laughs> Oh, I've got my problems, but I sure am thankful for them. <laughs> yes. Oh, that. Yeah. And, and regardless of how intense or, or, or mild our problems are, there are, they're ours, whatever they are, and they're not someone else's and, and we can appreciate other people's relationships and their journey. Uh, I think what's really important is that we really honor our own lives and the journey that we're on. I think it's, you're, you're doing a remarkable work, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. I think that a relationship is the intersection of two personalities. Mm. And so that is a very unique thing to <laughs> that couple. And it's really not supposed to look like anyone else's relationship. Mm. You know, I think that is a, a key thing because so many people that I've seen, you know, they, they have their own definition. They ask me, I think maybe most people ask you this too. Am I normal? Are we normal? Mm. We want to, we want to know that, that we're normal or, you know, is there some, what's wrong with me? Is this, is it supposed to be this way? So every person's journey is definitely unique with whatever you're going through in life. So, yeah. And it probably is normal. That's a good yeah. fallback answer. It's probably normal. Mm -hmm. Normal for you. Normal to go through this journey and learn and grow from it. There's, uh, I think you'd agree with me that um, it's not in vain, the things that we go through, the trauma, the deep relationship injuries, whatever it is that we've experienced in our life. It, none of that is in vain because there is a bigger purpose. And um, yeah, so... Well, um, I, I have a couple other questions if you have time here. Um, what would you say, knowing what you know now and all of you know the studying that you've done and you're, you're just continually learning all the time, right? I mean, all of us yes, are. Yes, aren't we? Are. <laughs> um, so what would you say if you could write a letter to your younger self, let's say two decades ago or something, what would be your main message for that you would want your younger self to know? 20 years ago, or a little bit more than 20 years ago, I was getting married. Mm -hmm. And it was my second marriage. And um, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I had decided to get married and knew that that was the right thing for me to do. But I also was deeply worried that I would relive and re uh, would do the same things again. Mm. So the letter that I would write to her is to, to trust her instinct and to, to settle down and just go through and do the best you can. And it will work out. Wow. That's great. That's great. 
we, it, yeah, worry can shed a lot of, I mean, it can create things for us, of course, if we can learn to live in the moment or chill. Honey, you're okay. You're okay. This can be, it'll be good. <laughs> Yeah, you're okay. And one of the most powerful things that couples can say to each other is we're okay. Mm -hmm. We don't agree. We're in conflict. We're having this trouble. It's a really rough spot, but we are okay. Mm. And I love it. What I learned from uh, Dr. Stan Tatkin, and I use it often, like you, you say that, yes, honey, we're okay, but that's that eye to eye that face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact, and even skin-to-skin, there's just something physiological about all of that, that you can put some flesh on that, honey, we're okay, we're going to get through this. Yeah. So that's powerful. You're doing a remarkable work, Sherry. So tell folks how can, well, I know I kind of asked, I, I said, I have one other question for you. I got one <laughs> other question for you. One other question for you. Uh, speak to the person and perhaps it is uh, the woman who like said, yeah, you know what? That's me. My husband, I've been trying to do therapy for a long time. He won't come to therapy. Um, speak to that woman. What is a message that you would give to her? I think that one of the things that holds people back from working on their relationship without their partner is that they're afraid that it means that they're going to have to do more work in the relationship. Mm. I am, it's one of the hesitations I had before specializing in this was not wanting to put more of the mental load on women. Mm -hmm. And as I have worked through more of this, what I realize is that when you work smarter, you are really reallocating your energy. So you're maybe there are things that you'll stop doing and there are things that you will start doing. And that very often a woman actually ends up doing less mm. when she intentionally puts the right energy into the relationship. Wow. She, she stops doing things that aren't working and that allow her spouse to maybe not show up mm. or or not carry their own weight. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, just kind of diffusing that fear that she's going to end up doing more, bearing more weight. And uh, when the, the opposite may indeed be true. Yeah. It's pretty mm. powerful to think that maybe you would do this work and your life would actually get easier. Mm. Mm. Fascinating. Well, yes. And tell folks how to get in touch with you, Sherry. So if you go to my website, it's sherrytimco.com. That's where you can find all of the things, all of the places you can find me. But if you want to hang out with me, the place to do that is in my Facebook community, which is, uh, it's called Date Night Community. Mm -hmm. And it is designed to help people spend more intentional time with their partner. So it's fun and encouraging and just a very positive space. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for this remarkable work that you're doing, making a difference in people's lives, couples and, and women. And we know that that trickles down to the whole family system and on so many levels, but thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you so much. This is a great, this is a very important conversation that you're bringing to the world. Well, appreciate you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I always appreciate hosting other therapists on the show. Here's some insights I had. Number one, all marriages and relationships are unique and will experience relationship injuries. Repair is possible. Number two, criticisms don't work if you expect your spouse to make positive changes. Rather, turn criticisms into invitations for what you want. They can turn down the invitation, but you can offer other ways to invite positive change. And number three, if you're afraid to come to therapy, thinking you'll need to do even more work on the relationship, relax. You'll actually do less. What stood out to you? Share your takeaways by going to betterrelationshipsbetterlife.com. 
Next week, we're going to laugh. So get ready to bring humor to your marriage as we hear from comedian Ken Davis, who is also my speaking mentor. Until then, feel free to share, subscribe, rate, and comment. See you next time for better relationships, better life.